reading through this put a cork in it, this newsletter that Chuck Fox put together every year and he'd ask for everybody's input from the various chairmen and this and that and if nobody, you know, if somebody stiffed him on the report, you know, he'd, he'd write him up in the, pour, in the cork <laughs> and, and uh, give him a new one right there, you know, and that was pretty good. But he had this little epitaph that he would stick into every single one of them. Uh, and, and part of it, it, the reason I bring it up is because now that we're a 501c3 and we're a very charitable organization, that wasn't always the case. Um, as a matter of fact, it was the opposite of the case. If you were on the board of directors when I was on there, and, and, and you came up with an idea like, um, you know, want to do a, a scholarship or, or a fundraise or something, it wouldn't even get a second. I mean, you were shut down. Uh, and and uh, Chuck's little description of who we are Said, or how do I get out of this outfit? Um, one of the things he put together, and you can read it if you want, is are we a charitable organization? And he goes through and he says, you know, numbered amongst our ranks are past presidents of, you know, the American Lung, Lung Association, uh, MS Society, all these other, United Way, and of course, you know, you're, you're, you're doing uh, your charity with the, with the nice guys. And there's a lot of people who are very actively involved in charities, but he says, however, we are not as an organization in existence for charitable purposes. That's a quote. So, you know, that was the mindset for 50 years. Um, and it's just now kind of changing. You know, and, and, and if you look at the, the books, we were, you know, a break-even club, intentionally. I mean, if you had extra money in the, in the coffers, I mean, you plugged it back into the next event, you subsidized the next event, bring the cost down for the next event. So every year you weren't carrying more than a couple thousand dollars, a thousand, fifteen hundred, if you had a lot more money, um, you'd run an event off the books so or you'd have a, a subsidy on the next event and make sure you know you kept it kept it low. And so now that's all changed. The mentality's changed and that's a good thing. Like I said, adapt or die, keep rolling. Um, it brings to mind Leo Sullivan and his idea of bringing women in. And that is an anathema right now, okay? He's a heretic when he brings that up. And I think, I, I, I mean, I know he's serious, but sometimes I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, talk to me in 20 years yeah. and see. I remember way back when I was first on the board, um, you know, and, and, and it was kind of amusing because he just set off this, you know, ignition of, uh, of debate, you know, and then he'd kind of just sit back and watch it. It was almost like he threw a hand grenade in the middle of the room, just see what would happen. But, you know, hey, the last run he made out, it was pretty serious. Uh, it stoked some fires, and uh, so at any rate, that's Leo. I mean, some of the, some of the chapters have women. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not blasphemy. <laughs> never say never. No, never, never say never, and... Uh, they had a women's auxiliary for a while. I was never around when that was around. But there's a um, there's a good cadre of girls um, that gather, as you know. You know, your wife, my wife, mm -hmm. and, um, Donna, know, Donna Ryan, Donna Ryan, and Becky Everett, and um, Evelyn. I keep getting his name backwards, but uh, there's a whole clan of them. And, and Linda O'Connell. Um, uh, they get along great. Uh, so we sort of have a, a, a non-working auxiliary corps, if you will. <laughs> One of the good traditions that not everybody gets a chance to bite into, but uh, I know my family does, is family. Um, you know, I've had uh, my son in the parade with me, and my father-in-law, and my brothers, two brothers. Um, and it can bring family together that, uh, you know, to celebrate their Irish heritage together. They might not be into all the friendly sons' trappings and everything, but just to march in a parade with a green blazer, you know, or maybe just go to the black tie dinner. Um, they might not be on all the 17th of the month club events and things like that, but um, when I first got in, Big Ed McCarthy, did you know Big Ed? All right, so Ed McCarthy's larger than life fella, and his son, when I was on the board, was Mike McCarthy, God rest his soul. Uh, Mike was also in the advertising business, and uh, um, he, uh, was, he was a president uh, while I was on the board, and just a gem of a human being. Um, he got a he got a big job up in L.A. and then passed away uh, while he was at work. And but then his brother Tim McCarthy was on the board, a president right before me, um, and his brother Dan, uh, his brother Patrick, 
um, all great people. There's, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, known him well. It was just great to, when we were at Tom Ham's, sit around with Big Ed and the four or five sons. They said, I don't know what they're doing. Um, and there too many to keep track of. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is, you know, it, it can be a family event. You got, you know, like Dave Harrison and Bob Harrison. I mean, there's a lot of father, son, brother. And he has his sons. He has his sons. He has his sons coming in. Terry O'Malley, as some like, and his other son Patrick, and you've got just a lot of events where, you know, maybe uh, just one person is super active, but the other ones, you know, they'll, they'll all show up and they'll all celebrate their Irish heritage together and they'll all be having fun with it. And, um, and uh, some are more, more active than others, but uh, it's a great opportunity to, to, uh, for, for some of us uh, to, uh, to have, like, you know, a family event where you celebrate with your brothers or your sons or fathers or whatever is. When we first started doing Christmas parades, um, it, it had to be about 96 and 97 and then 98. Uh, we went and we were doing the Pacific Beach Christmas Parade and that was done during the day and it was a slower parade like they spaced the uh, groups out. So anyway, it was it was more boring than the OB parade. The OB parade is a is a blast because it's condensed. You know, the the streets are smaller, uh, the, the 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 entries are closer together on each other's heels. For some reason, they would wait till the next entry was you know a couple hundred yards away before they nipped the next one in. It's the, and and the streets are super wide, so it was kind of thin and. Um, and, and we were, it was kind of a new idea to, to march in the Christmas parade. And so we only had maybe about 20, 25 guys in it. And, uh, and so we're coming down, and, and my wife is filming, Leslie's filming it. Uh, she's standing in front of the tiki, I don't know if you remember the tiki bar, but uh, she's filming it from there, and we come past and we're waving. And if you look at the video, and I'll give you the disc, but I thought I posted it to YouTube. You'll see some people in it from 98, including Chuck Fox, Bobby McNair, of course, Mike Neal's marching everybody in lockstep. Terry Huff, another man who's passed away, he's a good man. Um, and uh, I think Bob Harrison you can see in the background, too. Uh, and we're marching down, and Lassie's hollering at me, and I'm waving back. And I come over and I kiss the uh, baby. My, my daughter at the time was like four months old. Um, and so we marched down to the end of the parade, and we popped into a pub, of course, and uh, have a few drinks. And uh, then my, the parade's over. The street's still empty, and Mike Neal orders everybody back out onto the street, and we're going to march back up. We're marching up the parade. We're marching up the parade route. And everybody's like, the cops are coming. So we better get out of here quick. He's like, no, force forward. You know, if, if anybody asks, Frank O'Dwyer's in charge, right? He's the one. So I think he was like, he was like president at the time. So we're gonna throw a dryer under the bus. So we march all the way back up, and then we have, uh, you know, the, the video kind of ends when uh, we, I get to the tiki and I'm trying to say something clever and it comes out all mumbled. And it's obviously uh, I had a pop or two, and so, uh, uh, but you know, from there on, I mean, for for many years, we were talking about the wrong way parade. How Dwyer's in charge, and when I got the, uh, uh, I, I dug up some old footage many years ago and put together this very cheesy video um, called "The Wrong Way Parade." 